आता है समझ वा 2.5G तो 2.5G was basically H and it's still there I mean I still get E on my phone often okay, you are in some remote area and it says E if you go to foreign country in particular you might get an E has anybody else got an E right okay so that is H yeah, so sometimes it's GPS on it depends upon how much they have they have improved their towers. You see, for for edge you need a new radio. It's light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both of them are slow. See, thing is, now that you are used to 3G, 4G, and 5G, I mean, you know, these things are, you know, I mean, <laughs> they are slow by definition. But they are just surviving in the sense that if you get an E, at least you can send some data. If you don't get that E, you know, you, you will click something, you'll put A, and then it will take some time for the character to go there and get a code. <laughs> that would really, really be really slow then. Then you will know how. Okay. All right. So now we go to 3G. 3G is called WCDM. Okay. Wide band code division multiple access. This is the European 3G. If you remember the chart that we had, there were two 3G branches. One was American and one was European. European is 3GPP, American is 3GPP2. There are two organizations. So the European went for wide band. And it will be clear in a minute what is wide band. Basically, if you are given 5 megahertz, you use this band. And in the in the America, they just divided into pieces. So they didn't use this wide band. So here it is wide band. Also known as Universal Mobile Telecommunication System or UMTS. Now this whole telephony field is filled with acronyms. And if you read any book, they're just filled with these words. And so you got to just you get used to this UMTS, UTRAN, RAN, G RAN. So UMTS is another word you should know is nothing but WCDMA. Okay, WCDMA is the coding, UMTS is the real name of the system. Uses direct sequence spread spectrum over two 5 megahertz FDD channels. So, 5 megahertz down, 5 megahertz up, that is FDD, right? The whole 5 megahertz is, used, is shared by all the users using CDMA. Eh? No, 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 not TDD, sorry, sorry, CDMA, not TDD. Whole 5 megahertz is shared by code division multiple access where everybody has a different code. Remember the CDMA we talked about? And that code is direct sequence spread spectrum where you take your one bit and make 11 chips out of it. I don't know whatever number of chips, I don't know exactly how many here. But you, instead of one bit, you send a code. Now the radio access network, that was called RAN first, then it was called GE RAN, now it is called UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access Network, UTRAN. Yeah. It's there today, yeah, when you get 3G, you get UTRAN, that's what you're doing. LTE is not 3G. No, LTE is 3.9G, so that will come later. So this is, and LTE is not even CDMA by the way, so just hold on to the thought of LTE. This is 3G, and so in 3G, I'm just going to give you some buzzwords, and too bad it is buzzwords only, because this is all old history. If we teach you old history, we don't have time for the new history. So I'm going to concentrate on the new history a little bit more detail when we come to LTE and LTE advanced and 5G. This is just, you, you need to get by with, with it. Right? There is no new development in this. So when you hear the word UMTS, you know that they are talking about 3G. And when you hear the word UTRAN, you know that they are talking about the radio access network. Right? And the interface itself is called UTRA, air interface, air interface. All right? So the whole system is UTRAN, the radio access network, and the air interface is UTRA. Terrestrial radio access, UTRA. And they change the names of everything. 
So the user which was mobile something mobile station MS before is now called user element UE. The base station which was called BSC or something no base station BTS is now called node B. B is for base station node B. And the radio network controller name, luckily they didn't change and they didn't change MSC. So, now you will hear a lot of node Bs and UE. All right, when we say UE, it is the same thing as mobile station, MS, or mobile, what was ME we called it before. And so these are the users, node B is the basis. So this is 3G. Now, this is how I'm going to tell about 3G, believe it or not, we don't need to know more, more than this because this is all history. All right, this is already 10 years ago. So we go into the next one, which is 3.5G, which is HSPA. So just like GSM became GPRS, WCDMA now has this HSPA, which is evolution of WCDMA, right? And HSPA stands for high speed packet access, which has two parts, high speed downlink and high speed uplink. And they came in two phases. All right, so HSDPA and HSUPA, they didn't come together. They came piece by piece. By the way, for the phone company, it takes a very long time to implement any of these changes. You know why? Because they have 10,000 towers and you just go to and tell them, look like we got HSDPA. I say, hold on, hold on, it will take 10 years. <laughs> we have to you know, send people to these towers and change this new equipment and all that. So they move very slowly. I mean, I, I have a cartoon which shows they are elephants, right? I mean, they're not like horses like we are. You know, the thing is the, the enterprise networking industry, Ethernet guys, we run, you know, we just have last year we had one gigabit, this year we have 10 gigabit, next year we'll have 100 gigabit, next year you don't even know what is right now, 400 gigabit is there, okay? So I'm just saying that, you know, <laughs> they're running, right? But the telephone company, they're elephants. It costs money and it's infrastructure. Thing is, it's like roads. You know, roads cannot become, you know, from one gigabit to 10 gigabit next day, right? It will take, you know, a few years before the roads will become 10, 10 lanes. So that's what it is, is infrastructure. So anyway, HSDPA and HSUPA. What is HSDPA? Nothing but more of the same. Basically, adaptive modulation and coding, channel dependent scheduling. So this is a new thing. If your channel is good, we give you a different scheduling, which includes the modulation and the timing and everything else, depending on then the channel to somebody else. Okay. Previously, everybody had the same coding. Everybody had the same thing, right? So now from that, we are moving to channel dependent scheduling and high order modulation. Now we know that there is more than, you know, GMSK. There is, there, there is such thing as 16 QAM. All right, high order modulation, we can take, you know, more bits per hertz. And so you can do it uplink and downlink and all the way up to 64 QAM is HSPA. And now you can do up to 168 megabits down and 22 megabits up using MIMO and multiple carriers. HSPA plus actually, HSPA plus. So there's an evolution of HSPA, which is HSPA plus. Okay, so these came in three steps. First, HSDPA, then HSUPA, the combined became HSPA, and then HSPA plus. So all of these things that you know sound so trivial, MIMO and you know 16 QAM and all that, they made up 3.5G. And now the picture becomes very complicated because while 3.5G is there, 2G has not gone away. So when you get a phone which does, let's say 3G, it is also doing 2G. Luckily it is not doing 1G anymore. But if it's doing 2G, 2.5G, 2.9G, everything else that was ever introduced has to be done because you might run into a tower which is still at that age. Right? So the network looks like this. You see, we have three different RANs. You have GE RAN, UTRAN, well, I have introduced here something, one thing extra, which is LTE, which is EUTRAN. I haven't gotten into that yet. But basically, 
you see? And then we have these node Bs instead of BTS, and that node B, as we get to LTE, it will be called E and B. All right? Now, node B will become evolved node B, right? And so, it will be called E and B. And we have SGSN, GCSN, SS7, all of those. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good, good, good correction. So, on this slide, the first UE should be MS or ME. I forget what it was. Something like that. It was mobile something. Eh? MS, yeah. Not UE. And you notice that BSC is called RNC, radio network controller, and it is gone in this box. So these boxes are all happening, and unfortunately, they're all happening on every tower, right, at the same time. So you cannot just say that I have 4G and not 3G, and that's why the telephone com telephone calls are so expensive. <laughs> the whole telecommunication is so expensive, because they have all these boxes which are very specialized, and they are age old. So actually, this picture shows 3.9G LTE. But we have talked about so much about so far only about 3.5G, which is HSPA+. plus. So the next module, when we get into that module, we will talk about LTE. Right? And we will go into more detail of each of these things. I mean, more detail of these boxes. Right now on 3G, I'm just skipping most of it, giving you just the buzzwords so that you know that if you read somewhere, you know what they are. And if you really need to, if you happen to work for a phone company, of course, you will take a whole course on 3G <laughs> and read a whole book on 3G. But right now, it's not worth it. So here are all the acronyms. And let's just see if any one of them we didn't introduce. CS is circuit switched. EPC is evolved packet core, evolved packet system, GE RAN, SGSN, LTE, mobile management utility, MME. Actually, it should be entity. Uh, MME is right here. Uh, so I haven't introduced you yet. This will come back later. Mobile management. All it is saying is a handover management. Mobile management entity. And, then, and I haven't introduced SGW and PGW. These are all in the next module. So it's like so MSC Mobile Switching Center was there before. Packet switched. We know radio network control and SG, SN, SS7, ENB. Everything we have done except for the 3.9. All right, so that brings us to the end of this 1 to 3G and six key things. First thing we learned is that if the cluster size is N, then there is a distance that we can calculate between the cells of the same frequency. And that formula is D is equal to R square root of 3N, where R is the cell radius, N is the cluster size, and D is the distance between the centers of the cells, right? Then 1G was analog voice with FDMA, and then TDMA came up with 2G, and is most widely most widely implemented um, standard 2G, GSM, and then GSM didn't have good for was not good for data, so they put GPRS and Edge. 3G was with CDMA, WCDMA. Actually, I left half of 3G. Let me just tell you what I left. I left you the American 3G. Okay. So they have another version of CDMA and they have another version of HSPA and other version of HSPA plus. I don't know why I left it. I think the reason I left it because that is so limited in actually just to United States and also it is going away. The United States is adopting all these European things now. So, so the, for example, so the good thing is that the 3.9G onward, the whole world is one. So LTE, there is only one standard. Okay. So anyway, so here there is 3G. 3G was CDMA, and WCDMA had five megahertz channels. And the 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 American version is not called WCDMA; it is called CDMA 2000. That divided first into frequency and then did the CDMA on that. Okay. So it's not wideband; it is narrow. Data rate was improved later using HSP and HSPA plus. And 3.9G and 4G is high-speed data with OFDMA. And so all that is actually coming in the next module. So these are the two books which are online. And for reading, lots of Wikipedia and things like that, that's all.